hello everybody today we have a heavy topic today i have to speak in english and it is about pan paper mills the official name of pan paper mills was pan african paper mills and there has been some activity going on in western kenya a lot of promises made promises that have been made before about uh, loans that have been written off about we are going to build a factory this week there was uh, i think three or four cabinet secretaries traversing western province giving people promises they even went to vihiga and said you know g uh, gave money uh, for a field to be fenced barbed wire so that the 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 um a factory for the for the stones what are they called um granite factory in Vega county uh, you know promises 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 that we are going to build a granite factory these promises have been made year in year out election cycle election cycle out uh raila odinga came and held um uh, Tichilo, the governor of Vihiga, the hand and went around the county telling people we are going to build a granite factory. That was in 2017. That granite factory has not been built. So all we get in Western Kenya are promises, promises, promises. Other people get billions of shillings put in their industries, in their development sectors. And all we get in uh, uh, in uh, Mulembe country are promises. We are going to do this. We are going to do that. Today, I'm going to concentrate on pan paper mills webuye. And I'm going to read some of my uh, study. I did some research and I'm going to read from a paper that was written by Dennis Otieno. And this paper was published on the 28th of February 2020 in an in a article called Mambo. Dennis Otieno published this article this year. 28th of February 2020 and he talks about palm paper mills and the title of the paper is living by the rhythm of pan-african paper mills the rise and decline of Webuya town Western Kenya and it is in a periodical called Mambo volume volume 9 and section 1 2020 so this paper factory which was called People pop popularly called it pan paper mills, but the real name is pan African paper mills. So this paper factory was central to the rapid development of Webuye Town. Webuye Town is in Bungoma County, and this town developed so rapidly in the 70s, and it also but it declined by 2010. So from 1972, it was rising, growing very fast. Then in 2010, it collapsed because of pan paper mills the, the pan paper factory collapsed so this giant factory pan paper mills was established in 1972 and it was established at the same time as mumia's sugar company i talked about mumia's sugar company at the same time during the days of kenyatta and 1972 it saw a rapid development of webuye making it comparable to other small towns in western kenya so there was a lot of employment and Webuye changed from a frontier town, a just a small town, and it became an industrial town. And then in the 1990s, there were structural adjustment programs during the days of Moi. And these structural adjustment programs contributed to the, 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 the collapse of Webuye uh, paper mills. So it collapsed in 2010 because of structural adjustment programs was one of the reasons it collapsed. The other one was mismanagement and many other reasons. So the machines, the, the rusting machines were vandalized. People came and vandalized those machines. They were huge machines. They were vandalized and stolen. And uh, this collapse of the Mumia, uh, the pan paper sugar mills had a negative impact on the environment. So this company, when it was functioning, it was also an environmental disaster because people's health was affected and uh, because of the fumes that were coming from the company, because of the, the, the waste uh, liquid they were using for the paper pulp that went into the river Zoya. The animals would drink this 
poison and the animals would actually die and people started becoming sick there was a smell in the air and also pan paper mills depended on cutting down trees so there was an environmental disaster and you know the uh, people were not used to a barren environment that did not have trees so it had negative as well as positive impacts there were jobs yes the town was growing but there were also negative impacts that were never addressed so uh, when the people complained the, the people of Webuya complained palm paper mills decided to start uh, reforesting they started trying to grow trees to fill up the bare spaces so in 2016 the government of Uru Kenyatta privatized pan paper mills as a way of reviving the factory. This is the solution he thought uh, he should make it, take it from being a parastatal and make give it to a, 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 fa a family, the Rai family. So the private Rai group inherited the factory in 2016 and they are trying to rehabilitate it. And the Rai family consists of Jaswant Singh Rai. Javir Singh Rai and Onkar Singh Rai. That is the Rai group who are just the face of this company. But they are real owners behind, and we are going to talk about the alleged real owners behind Pan Paper Mills. So, going back to history, Kenya's industrialization was laid during colonial times. The colonialists planned Kenya's industrialization. They planned the Ramisi factory in Mombasa that collapsed a long time ago. They planned Mumia's factory during colonial times. They planned Pan Paper and many other projects in the country. They were planned during colonial times, but Kenyatta came and made them into reality because they happened during Kenyatta's time, Mumia's Sugar, 1972. But those were things that were planned in colonial countries, but Kenyatta had some positive uh, things that he did. He brought those plans into fruition. So, 1972, uh, Mumia's uh, Pan Paper Company, you know, kicks off, and Mumia's also kicks off. Two huge companies that were very important to the people of Western Kenya. So during colonial times, there were industrial processing companies that were, you know, uh, started. They were both agricultural and non-agricultural. I believe the fish processing company in Thika is one of them. So there were many companies in several places. And we talk about the fish company another day. So Mumia was established 1972. Pan Paper African Mills was established 1972. And Pan Paper was taken to Ebuya because there was availability of timber in Western. There, were a lot, there was a lot of forest, forest cover in Kenya. So this town, because of a lot of timber, a lot of wood, the country developed a strong industrial base that, that was needed. So by 1972, Pan Paper was the biggest industrial complex in Kenya by 1972 and the largest paper factory in East and Central Africa. That is the same story of Mumias. Mumias was also one of the largest in East and Central Africa. So Pan Paper was doing very well. So as I said, originally, the origin of Pan Paper Mills was 1964, as feasibility study was done, and a factory was constructed beginning 1970 by the Kenya government. The Kenya government, in conjunction with an Indian company called Orient Paper Mills of India, they started this pan paper mills and they uh, they were financed by the world bank the world bank sponsored this program but the same world bank that sponsored pan paper mills co-sponsored pan paper mills because the government of kenya also put some input is the same world bank that brought the structural adjustment programs that contributed to the collapse of pan paper mills so, a thousand people were to be employed in Pan Paper Mills immediately in 1972. A thousand people, a thousand men will support a lot of people. So that makes a big difference. Even here in America, if a company comes and says, I'm going to employ a thousand people in a small town, it makes a big difference. So they were supposed to employ a thousand people and the materials were entirely grown in Kenya. The trees were being cut down in the Wobuya area. And then the paper that was made was high grade and it was uh, produced and sold um, it was produced and sold locally and overseas so we used to export paper from pan paper mills 
Now, we used to have trees. There were pine trees, there were cypress trees, and eucalyptus plantations. Pines, cypress, and eucalyptus plantations that were in Wedbuye and surrounding areas that produced this paper pulp. So initially, pan paper used to produce 45,000 tons, and then it increased it to 66,000 tons, and then it increased it to 96,000 tons by 1991. So it was growing by leaps and bounds. The factory was growing by in its production. And because of this, please listen to this, because of these activities, uh, 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 industrial activities of pan paper mills, the country saved 8.1 billion shillings through because of the the, the sale of uh, the paper mills the country uh, saved 8.1 billion shillings and why did it save one 8.1 billion shillings because there is no need for foreign exchange because when uh, when uh, when there's money coming in that means the 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 country does not need to go and uh, get foreign exchange elsewhere because we are selling to uganda selling to tanzania and selling to other countries so the country used to save money because of pan paper mills the country used to make money because of pan paper mills so we used to save large sums of money and unfortunately the company now is dilapidated and the state you know it has uh, some of the old stuff you know are recalled but still the, the problem has not been solved so the the i don't know what happened to it is alleged that the 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 country used to make so much money that even museveni was in support of pan paper mills and i'm going to quote exactly what he said so we saved 8 billion through import substitution and we earned 407 millions in foreign exchange that is the difference that pan paper mills made to the kenyan economy it brought foreign exchange and it earned money for the country because of exportation of paper so the population of webuye grew Webuye had 3,000 employees. Some people even came from Uganda. Some people came from India. You know, the, the big, big people came from India. So in its heyday, in its good times, Webuye employed 3,000 employees. Those are many people. There was rapid economic growth. And Madhu Paper, because of Mumia Sugar Company, Madhu Paper, which used to make the Rosie and Royal Tissue Paper, if you remember the Rosie and Royal Tissue Paper, Royal Tissue Paper, they were only dependent on pan paper. They used the pulp and paper from pan paper to produce the toilet tissue. And Kenya was self-sufficient. We did not have to import toilet paper. Now we are importing all kinds of things that we should, including paper. So Madhu Paper was doing very well. And it, it, Madhu Paper placed Kenya on the East African map, you know, in, in terms of uh, toilet paper production. So you can see how Kenya was moving on in the right direction. So initially, uh, uh, pan paper used to use railway, the railway to transport the wood to the factory, you know, and also to, 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 to take the paper, you know, to transport the paper once it has been manufactured. But instead of, uh, it, it now went back to the road um, transportation. And this is where I'm going to talk about SGR. SGR should have been built in Western Kenya because of big initiatives like this but we go and build an SGR that does not make sense from Mombasa to Naivasha instead of building a rail system in Western Kenya connecting Western Kenya to the rest of the country and to the rest of the world to, because Kenya through Western Kenya you can get into Southern Sudan you can get into DRC Congo you know it, it is a, a gateway to many countries. And remember, Uganda is our largest trading partner. Uganda is our largest trading partner. So we need to have systems that get us through our largest trading partner. So that is why we need a leader from Western Kenya, a leader who understands. And that is Musali Amdabadi. He understands economics. He understands that why is the Western region poor? It is supposed to be rich. Because we are the gateway 
to the biggest economy, to the, the, the biggest um, uh, the, to the biggest trading partner, which is Uganda. The next trading partner is Tanzania, you know. Those are the most important people to us. And now we have Southern Sudan, a new country. That is a big market. We have DRC Congo. You can take, you can drive by road into DRC Congo. We have Rwanda, we have Burundi. So why are we messing up all these things? So anyway, trade because of pan paper. This pan paper trade expanded to Tanzania, it expanded to Rwanda, it, and right now it is expanding to South Sudan and other countries, you know, the, the, the possibilities are limitless. However, the introduction of the structural adjustment programs during the days of Moi, they brought more harm than good and this is what the World Bank did. The same World Bank that funded Pan Paper, same World Bank brought these structural adjustment programs. They asked Moi not to spend money and they liberalized the economy and that messed up pan paper uh, factory. So, so this manufacturing sector really suffered because of the um, structural adjustment programs. So I can shorten this by saying the World Bank made pan paper mills and the World Bank destroyed pan paper mills. So many industries, uh, many industries no longer enjoyed the monopoly because of the liberalization. They told us to liberalize the economy. So many industries like pan paper no longer enjoyed the monopoly. So the beginning of their decline. So the decline was also due to mismanagement. It's not just the uh, um, structure adjustment programs, but there was mismanagement like Mumia's sugar. Most of the loss of Mumia's sugar was due to the mismanagement of the CEOs. So there was a lot of decline. So 1992 structural adjustment programs led to the collapse of Pan Paper in 2009. So the management that was contracted from India bought the largest shares and they abandoned the factory. They bought the shares and abandoned the factory. As debt started to mount, they ran away. And Webuya declined to poverty, Webuya declined into hopelessness. Over 3,000 people lost their jobs. And those are not very many people. So, and it is not just jobs. It is also small industries around, you know, people who are selling food and, you know, housing. So many sectors uh, suffered. So on the environment, the indigenous Kakamega forest was turned into barren land. So those are the negative effects of pan paper. So they, they cut down the indigenous forest and they were not replacing it accordingly. So by 2000, the year 2000, the, the trucks had to travel very far because they had already finished the, the Kakamega forest. They had to travel very far, like 100 miles, you know, radius of the uh, industry of pan paper to look for raw materials. So they started going further and further away into Tarbo area to look for raw materials. And there was a vast environmental wasteland. So pan paper became a, uh, and it was a social burden to the locals. The locals found it, a, you know, a social burden because, like I said, because of the pollution, the pulp and the, the materials they were using to, to make the paper pulp they, they, they went into the river, they were not treated, and they poisoned the river. And when the animals would drink this water, they would become sick, and people have, had skin ailments. People had, uh, uh, you know, the emissions also, also affected people's lungs because there was a smell around Webuye. So these emissions damaged people's lungs, people had pneumonia, people had skin diseases. And the seepage from the sulfide ponds sulfide ponds because that's what they use to treat the pulp this seepage from the sulf, uh, ponds seeped into the Nzoya river which the dependents you know depended on it for drinking water they depended it for watering their animals they depended it for bathing so the animals were killed as a result of the chemicals produced during the pulping so the, envel the area was enveloped in a foul-smelling air. There was a foul-smelling, you know, there was a foul smell around Webuye. So those are the negatives. And there was also ash, acidic fumes and fly ash were due to corrosion of the corrugated iron roofs. So there was a bad, you know, air quality, bad air quality. And the solid waste was dumped in fields as manure. 
and this solid waste led to decline because this solid manure has chemicals in it so it destroyed the soil and the solid waste uh, you know messed up agricultural production in the Webuye area so the people are suffering and all these issues have never been addressed all these environmental issues have never been addressed today people have never been compensated they, they are just ignored because people in Western they don't take our issues seriously you know so people died you know so there were casualties human casualties livestock casualties sickness you know so the pan paper 1987 after the locals complained the pan paper embarked on reforestation they started trying to build to, to plant more trees to appease the locals and to replenish the neutral uh, the natural resources so they had nursery trees in webuye they had nursery trees in kaptagat they had nursery trees in other anabkoi so pan paper tried they raised over 1 million trees and in 1989, uh, they had a million trees in the nursery, so they tried. 1987, they planted 50,000 trees, 50,000 trees. By 1988, they planted 800,000 trees. And by 1989, over 13 hectares of trees were planted in the pulp wood circle. They call it a pulp wood circle, the circle surrounding the company where they get their wood, the forest. So they had at least, they tried, tried to plant uh, more uh, wood. That was pan paper. So the wood circle west of Nakuru. So pan paper played a big role in the greening of Kenya. I'm trying to wonder whether the little Wangare Madhaya used to talk about the, the pulp wood circle in Western. I don't know whether that was one of her concerns because she was interested in the green, greening movement of Kenya. So in 2016, the Kenyatta government privatized right, the, 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 the privatization of pan paper, which was a, a parastato, and privatized it and gave it to Rai, to the Rai family that I have named. I named the Rai uh, clan. And this Rai clan has tried to pump in large sums of money in the otherwise beyond repair factory. They've really tried. The deputated state of the factory, you know, they've tried to recall some of the old staff. They've tried to recall a few expatriates. They're trying to rebuild it right now. So around uh, 1964 to 1991, Rebuwe Rebu rapidly developed due to pan paper. It gave opportunities for thousands of people. There was education. There were a few simple health services. Which, which prompted a vibrant private sector. However, the factory, this monster, reminds the people of Webuye of the environmental hazards. This monster, it is a monster, but it is also a savior. It reminds them of the lives that were lost. It reminds them of the environmental pollution. Environment, it reminds them of the stress and the deaths. It reminds them of agony and misery. So as much as we are crying, we want our factories back. These environmental hazards have not been addressed. And we have NEMA, National Environmental Management Agency, that is not taking care of all these problems. Because there is a way industrialists can clean the environment. There is a way industrialists can clean the toxic waste so that it doesn't affect the locals. But you can see from what I have said, they were careless. They were just dumping stuff all over, dumping the raw the, 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 the raw waste material on people's land. They were dumping the the, 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 the sulfide uh, the sulfide you know ponds, you know, putting it into the Zoya River. They didn't care. But they there are measures that industries are supposed to take. So when they have given this company to the Rai camp to the Rai uh, family, is the Rai family going to follow the NEMA? Uh, laws and regulations or are they going to ignore it that is my concern and where are the lawyers we need a, an army of lawyers in western looking for the, the environmental lawyers we have them i know because i helped kennedy ogeto when he was writing his master's thesis and i remember he he was dealing with environmental law so we need lawyers to go to western kenya and save our people so mike magero on facebook said and this is allegedly he said that it is alleged that the Rai family 
just want sing rai tajvir sing rai and or on car sing rai it is alleged that they are owners of west kenya sugar also known as cabras sugar mills and these are the same people who have bought pan paper mills and they bought pan paper mills for 1 billion some people say 900 million some people say the rai family bought pan paper mills for 1 billion kenya shillings yet the farm was valued for 20 billion kenya shillings there is a big problem right there i told you about kenya national assurance company same thing happens they run down these companies and then they sell them off for a song this has happened to pan paper mills so allegedly the purchase came with over 5,000 acres of land. Can you imagine? He only bought it for 1 billion Kenya shillings. And it comes with 5,000 acres of land. And this land is in Wobuye and Tarbo. So it is rumored that the Rai family is set to acquire Nzoia sugar mills with its 10,000 acre nuclear estate. We are having a land crisis here in Western people. This same family is going to acquire Zoya sugar mills with its 10,000 acre nuclear estate for a song, for a little money. And the three sugar farms, West Kenya, Sukari Industries and Olepeito already controls this family already controls 45% of Kenya's sugar market now with Nzoia and Mumias they will control up to 80% of sugar in Kenya a monopoly being controlled by a family and I'm going to tell you why I'm putting it in quotes so is Mount Elgon at risk for rye plywood is Mount Elgon at risk for this uh, rye paper mills? Because Mount Elgon, I have been to Mount Elgon, and Mount Elgon has indigenous forest. Because the, the suburbs, they, they protect their land jealously. You can still find indigenous forest in, on Mount Elgon. So the same family, the same rye family, is already in control of 10,000 acres of ADC, Agricultural Development Land in Transoia County. Remember, Agricultural Development County, ADC, fell down during the days of Moi. It collapsed. It fell. And they control 10,000 acres in Transoia County. So, according to Mike Magero on Facebook, this is the largest land grab in Kenya. 5,000, 10,000, 10,000, that is 25,000 right there. We are not even talking of Mumias yet, 8,700 and many others. They come with land and they are sold for a penny. They are sold for a song. They are sold for nothing. This is the largest land grab in Kenya. How dare Eugene Wamalwa or Paranya? They are selling Luya land. They are selling our children's inheritance for a song coming to lie to us, coming to tell us about Mumia's sugar, coming with the cabinet secretary, M Munya, to lie to us. Why are the cabinet secretaries traversing Western during these COVID times? Why are they going to lie to us in Western? It is alleged that the Rai family is the, the that the Rai is really the Rai group which is a company, is really the property of Moi and the Kenyatta, the first lady, they are involved. That is allegedly, the Indians are just directors. So you can see what is happening to our country. You can see how our Western Kenya industries are being killed by the royal family. The Moi family has a stake in it. The Kenyatta's have a stake in it. That is alleged. So let me tell you what Museveni said in 2019. According to NTV, I listened to a video on NTV, and this is what Museveni said in 2019. Museveni said, he challenges Uhuru and wonders what happened to Webuya pan paper mills. This is Museveni from Mexico, 2019, last year. You're wearing Museveni. 
decried the non-operation of the facility whose current state is not only affecting Kenya's economy, but is also affecting Uganda's economy. And President Kenyatta was very quick because they were together. President Kenyatta quickly responded and said, oh, it is being worked on. How is it being worked on? It is being sold to an individual, a so-called Rai group. And we know Rai are just the faces. Who is behind the Rai group? Because if you go to Mumia Sugar, you find the Rai group is there also. And some other people who are not named. So that is how he's taking care of it, taking a parastatal and giving it to an individual for a song for a billion when it is worth 20 billion and land that comes with it, you know, 5,000 acres comes with it, 10,000 acres comes with it, another 10,000, another, you know, what is happening? So this is what Museveni says, and I quote, so it will totally pacify this area. He says the collapse of pan paper mills will totally pacify this area. And he says, Museveni's words, when I was going to university, Kenya had built a paper mill and it was called Tarbo. I don't know what happened to that paper mill. This is Museveni concerned about Kenyan industries because we are a unit. We are to tied, to tied together as East Africa, the East Africa community. What happens in Kenya affects Uganda, affects the rest of the region. So Museveni is smart like that. He says, I don't know what happened to that paper mill. And Uhuru quickly said, it, uh, it collapsed. We are trying to revive it. You know? Museveni. So, this is, Museveni says, this is 400, and he says that he uses, Museveni says he uses 413 US dollars. He's spending that money to buy paper from Finland. That is Museveni complaining. He feels like he's donating money to Finland. When he used to easily buy that paper from Webuye next door. From Webuye next door. But he has to spend a lot of money because Finland, remember, is a land of forests. And he's wondering, why can't I buy this, that, this paper from Webuye? And we, what uh, Museveni says, is it because of Kulala? What to Amelala Kwakazi? And it is true. Our president, Amelala. But Amelala Ama is busy acquiring our industries for a song with the face of the Rai group, allegedly. So, in 15 December 2016, Uhuru and Ruto, 2016, 15 December, Uhuru and Ruto and Ken Lusaka, who was then governor of, of Bungoma, and Wamalwa, the same Eugene Wamalwa, they reopened the mill. They reopened Pan Paper Mill, and it was renamed the Rai group. So Wamalwa was there when it was being reopened. And he's still coming back to give us empty promises. He and Oparanya and bringing CSs physically coming to tell us nonsense, giving us promises. Promises, promises. When other people are being given me billions of shillings, we are given empty promises. And they'll come, go away, they've now come and lie to people, and they will come back and give us more promises next time when they want uh, votes, you know? So they renamed this Rai group. And they promised to pump over six billion because they've already given it to the right group. They promised to pump six million. That is a promise. Six billion to 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 revive the facility. That was 2016. It is now almost four years down the line. There is no smoke. No machines are rumbling. There are no workers on site. There are just guards there guarding the gate guarding the, rem the remnants of the, 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 the machines that have already been vandalized and stolen. There is nothing going on. Promises, promises, promises. So, the giant is sleeping. And this giant is squeezing the confidence out of the government. So the residents, the president has, you know, he has revived the conversation, but... All we get are lawyers are just liars, lies. We just get lies while others are getting billions, you know. I said Otichilo stood on the, one of the things he stood on his platform was, I'm going to build, he said he's going to build two factories, two granite factories in Vihiga. 
Those factories have not been built. And then these uh, CSs, Munya, and the transport CS, these quacks, they call themselves professionals, but they are quacks. They come, and the best thing they can do in Vihiga is buy barbed wire, and that barbed wire is meant to uh, fence the area where they're supposed to build, where they're supposed to build the, the, the imaginary granite factory. So I'm very upset. I'm upset that there are environmental crimes that have been, uh, have been done to the Mulembe people in Webuye. And nobody has stood up and asked for them to be compensated. Land is taken away from the Mumias people. And now they want to sell Mumias and give away the land that the people of Wanga, the Abahui gave that land. They did not sell it. They leased it. Nobody has paid them since 1972 for the lease of that land. The lease expired after 30 years. Nobody has given the money for the lease. And they, they, nobody has bought it because it still belongs to the Abahui people of Wanga. But somebody wants to sell Mumias with 8,700 acres of land. There is a problem in Western, and I am not happy about it. And something needs to be done. We need lawyers on the ground. We need to go and protect the people. We need environmental NEMA to do its job so that a company is not allowed to destroy the environment. They should come. This is the 21st century. There are ways you can treat that waste, treat that sulfide, whatever it is. There's a way you can dump your, your you can get rid of your, your, your waste. And we don't have to use trees. There is uh, another, I think, is, is it jute? There is a plant that grows faster than trees. We can use, plant that maybe even subcontract farmers to plant that plant. I'm going to look for it. I can't remember what it is. I hope somebody can. There's a plant you can grow, and that plant can be used to produce paper. We don't have to deforest our, our forests. So lawyers, we are given a short, we are shortchanged. And when I talk about lawyer unity, I know what I'm talking about. When I talk about coming behind our, our brothers who care about us, I know what I'm talking about. We need to support Wetangula. We need to support... Uh, and we used we need to also make them accountable and tell them to stand up for our rights because Eugene Wamalo is not standing up for our rights. I don't know, is he a lawyer? Oparanya is not standing up for our rights. Otichilo is not standing up for our rights. They are interested in their own positions. They are interested in being, uh, uh, you know, uh, interested in their party leader, you know, or in Democratic Party. Are they interested in the lawyer people? There is a problem, and I'm not going to keep quiet. I'm going to make a lot of noise. We need people to go on the ground and make sure, even if Rai company has been given, Rai group has been given a pan paper, they should, um, you know, go by the environmental standards. They should not poison the water. And we should move into the 21st century. There is a plant you can plant that can be harvested and and made into paper. We don't have to go using 21st century methods, to, I mean 19th century methods in the 21st